test. All right, there we are. So um, I thought I would show you guys. I was working on a personal piece, basically a piece for fun. Thought I would show you uh, how to draw an argyle pattern because I was trying to make one. Thought it was tricky. Found a good way to handle it. And so anyway, uh, argyle is... Well, I was looking. I was looking on Google Images, punched in the word hosiery, saw this really cool pattern on it, and noticed how carefully placed all the diamond shapes were. Like it's not. There's not a whole lot of warpage. It's really, really well placed. So, um, I when I tried to draw it, I found I had a lot of problems with something called drift. And you probably heard me talking about it in my previous video, where you're trying to draw the pattern. And I was trying to draw these lines that were going over the diagonal lines, and they were all drifting all over the place, and I couldn't get the diamonds to sit where I wanted them to. So, I worked out a way to deal with it. And the first thing I need to do is work out a scaffolding pattern. So, in this case, I'm going to work out some... I'm just going to divide up the leg. The problem is we've got to deal with all these perspective issues all at the same time. So you can see here, I'm pretty much following a very box cubic pattern. This is why we practice drawing boxes so much because it comes in handy later on. And then I'm going to divide it up into a grid. So I'm going in the other axis and I'm trying to cut this up into squares. And you'll notice how I use little little pieces, right? I don't try to draw it all as one curve. Even when I did these curves here, it's like I had a pretty clear image of it. But if you don't have a clear image, use little pieces of it because no one's going to... Number one, when you use the smaller pieces, it's easier to control and no one's going to see it because it's going to be erased afterwards. This is just a, an, intermediary, an intermediary step. It's a precursor step. So... And the precursor step is there to help us deal with the drifting issue. A lot of this is probably one of the reasons why you know you should use guidelines is anytime you have a situation where there is drifting from the structure, then you adopt techniques like this. So now I've got everything divided up into a neat little grid, and then I'm going to start dividing this up into diamonds. So you'll see that there are these nodes. Here, right? Diagonal nodes. That's the direction I need to separate everything in. So, pretty simple. I'm going to do like that, and then also split like that. Again, this is doesn't have to be super careful, but you you see how I have to alternate again and again and again, and this one has to wrap up and around due to foreshortening, perspective foreshortening. And, and you'll see how I don't try to go all the way across. I just take it one segment at a time and don't rush it. And you see this one here has to, has to have a bit of a downward bend to it. So every time, if you're dealing with Argyle, or rather, if you're dealing with a pattern, it really helps to segment things because of this changing perspective. It allows you to break down the problems. Because it's very complex, right? Like you're having to deal with a with this texture mapping, you're having to deal with this pattern, and even over the course of the entire square of, of one grid square, there is there's warpage just due to the fact that you know she's got squishy legs. And there's a lot of you know, tissue warpage, a lot of fat and muscle, and I'm just trying to, I'm dealing with that. Plus you have, again, every single one of these squares has a different planar angle, a different planar orientation. So this allows me to deal with that problem. Anyway, it's looking pretty decent. That one goes down there. Now the next step is I have another layer here, which is like that. So I'm just going to grab my previous color that I used. And now it's just time to draw the diamonds. 
to just fill in. Oh, I think I had that on an overlay layer. I was grabbing. Seemed like I was painting on the with the wrong color. Okay, good. Always make sure that your color is correct before you go and apply it on everything and then realize, oh crap, used the wrong color. So, pretty simple. Fill it all in. Actually, I think an even faster thing for me to do would be to simply fill the whole thing first. So I'm going to get a leg, uh, like, like just a, a full leg mask. Using this simple tool, which is like a, it's like a lasso fill. Oh, hello. Why is that happening? You see this funny? Why is that overlapping like that? I I don't know why this is happening. Eh. Nope. Oh, you know what it is? I think there's just there is simply another layer in there that's um that this thing seems to be interacting with. So I'll just have to go and hunt that thing. Hunt it down and destroy it. What is interacting there? I don't know. Let me turn on my checkerboard. There we are. Ah, okay. Here we are. Huh. That's why. That's because this layer here has like white a white background for some reason. Okay, well, uh, that's fine. I just have to uh, chop it out. Not a problem. I must have filled it in earlier with uh, another shape. So it's causing a compositing issue, meaning the layers are compositing strangely. probably notice that whenever I deal with things like masking, I just I zoom in to get the precision that I need and I'm only careful right up to the line oh, I still have to go all do all that a little bit of brute force Brute force work, meaning that this is just stuff that takes a while. You can skip past this. Okay. Oh, got a little bit more here. Oh, I guess I'll cut it out along. There. You probably notice how easy it like how easy I seem to make this because I'm not drawing from my fingers. Like I'm not using my fingertips to draw. Any of these really big long curves would just be a nightmare to draw. If I was doing it with like just fingers like this, it'd be a nightmare. So instead I use my entire arm. Boom. There. Good. So that deals with that. And I have this layer here. Okay, right. So, pretty much the same operation. And anytime you're trying to do clean work, you, you have to look at the curve that you're trying to create. Right, so you can see that this line is going this way. My arm moves best, most naturally in this angle, so I always rotate the canvas to match that angle. Don't stubbornly leave your view at a at an angle and zoom level that is just doesn't work well. So the thing is, it's not that I'm capable of drawing many, many different curves. I'm good at drawing one curve very consistently, and then I always pan and rotate the view so that it fits with that ideal curve that I, I can draw. Okay, so I have this 
have this now. Now I need to uh, lock the transparency. I'll just get some pure white. And I'll figure out, let's see, I want the diamond here on the knee to be dark. And I need this, this part, these parts here need to be light. So again, pretty simple now. So that one needs to be light. That one needs to be light. That needs to be light. I'm just marking all the, um, the squares that I want to be light. You see, I do this. Actually, no, wait, hold on. This one goes like that. Yeah, okay, right, so it turns 90 degrees. That's correct. That one's right, that one's right, that one's white as well. Just looking around. So I say mark these things off first because, because if you just zoom in and start you know, painting out, you might forget. You, this, this allows me to stay zoomed in. Right, so I do a lot of you know, planning in advance. So this kind of, if you want to you know, do this, I, I, I think the higher the level of artwork that you want to create, the more planning is required. More preparation is needed. And preparation both in terms of what you do to the work and also mental preparation and training. And this is not the kind of stuff that you know, like you just learn from school. It's more like it just comes from being able, you have to look at a situation and then look for problems and then say, well, you know, I'm going to run into this problem, I'm going to run into that problem. Or what you do is you, you try it and then you realize you know, what's going wrong. You're like, oh, I'm having this drifting problem, I'm having that drifting problem. These lines, I can't draw the whole thing as one big curve because it's too difficult. So I need to split the problem up into smaller curves or, or maybe I just can't visualize the trying to draw a line which goes up and over and goes diagonal and goes down like that. Like, you know, it's just, there's too many perspective warps, too many perspective operations required that I can't mentally manipulate it. So I'll draw a grid, but then the grid's difficult. So I'll just draw lines going in one axis. See what I mean is that you just, it's a way of thinking where you break down the problem into many sub steps that are manageable, mentally manageable. Because if you don't, if you don't break down things into manageable steps, then the alternative is to just be constantly feeling overwhelmed. You'll just, if, if the steps are too large to manage, they're, they're un, they become unmanageable, you get overwhelmed, and then drawing is just a draining experience. It just becomes this draining experience that you won't enjoy. And good luck making your artwork actually you know, look enjoyable to other people because they will sense that you weren't having a good time. They will sense that you struggled with the artwork. And the thing about art is that people are not supposed to know how hard you work. They're not supposed to know how much effort you put into the lines and making things super clean. And they're not supposed to know. It's like when you go watch the Olympics and you watch you know, any of the, the, the acrobatics you know, people on the parallel bars and whatnot, like you don't want to see them struggling, right? Like the, that's how they, they judge them, right? They judge how well these people are able to pull off the, 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 the stunts without looking like they're really tired and looking like they're, they're trying really hard to not fall over on their asses. So, okay, good. So next stage, I'm just going to draw. I have to, again... I have to connect these nodes and I'm going to deal with each one individually. And again, you can see why You can see why I split this thing up into multiple stages for the uh, Argyle pattern. So these are these crosses, the inverted cross patterns.
This is the like this is the magic of breaking things down. If you break things down, you can do you can just do like this is this is the magic sauce. Like this is how you're how I'm able to take on tasks that I would not normally be able to handle. Like I'm not some like when I when I got better and better at art, I simply got better at breaking things down. I didn't I didn't, I don't know, grow new brain cells or anything like that. I didn't, you know, magically become some better art. Like, I I just, you know, I didn't suddenly become some prodigious powerhouse of, of art. I just found a better process. I found a better way of doing things. That, that That's all it is. It's just, I found a better way of doing things, and then I, and then I, you know, kind of trained myself to do things that way, right? Like, I made that my... It's one thing to learn a thing, it's another thing to kind of make it your way of life. Make it your way of, you know, ingrain it into your process and make it yours. So, good, now we've got that pattern, that's that's good. And then, now I have to take this here, let me just use, I'll just mark that as a red line, I'll use it as a stencil. And then I can go into this layer here. And then I can just paint using the gray. Let me just set this up as like a multiply layer. Right, okay. And now I can just paint the gray lines where I need them. Or actually just do gray everything like that. And then only paint the white areas that I need. So again, it's like I find ways to save myself time if you just if you find that you're having to right, it's like like I just saved myself half the work just just now just by thinking about it so it's it's strategy right a lot of a lot of this dealing with patterns like this patterns which are going over surface forms it's it's largely strategy, like a game of strategy. It's not like and and this is what I would call post -pro this is what I would, it would call as post process work, right? Like the actual initial design, all this like stuff here. I'll, I'll show you my overlay, my um, where is it? Yeah, this is my initial design. Just this, I would work out my frame. And it's just th thinking, okay, I want the head here, all right, I want this hand going this way, that hand going that way. It's just a lot of, you know, you can kind of get the rough flow, right? It's the rough arrangement. It's, this is my plan. This was my plan. And then, of course, I did wind up going out of the frame. I was fine with that. So I did push things out, but you can see how I have a plan. I have, you know, a thing that I want to do. And... And I try to figure things out in advance, and I and I break it down. Okay, good. So now that I have that done, then I guess I can turn off this layer. I'm just manipulating stuff on my monitor. And then I can set this one to overlay now. Good. Oh. But now that it's in overlay mode, I can see the checkerboard through there. That that's this is the problem that I'm having right now. Let me just set that to like color mode. Oh, okay, good. So it does that. Okay, so I do set it to overlay mode. All right, and then I'm going to start painting it up. So to do that. I'll just go into another layer. I'll use my layer stencil. Okay, good. And by using stencils, what it does is it just constrains all the paint to that stencil. Great, very handy. I don't like having having to to work the brush with high precision. If I can use previous stuff that I've drawn to constrain my paints, it just makes my life easier. Great. And then, um, since I've chosen some of the re like really dark colors, I'm going to start. Um, 
I know people would like I'm going to work in an additive fashion. So additive for me means that I can actually put in speculus first. So I'm going to get this a bit of a, a glossy rim light on this. And then I've got this brush here. You can see this one is a... I'm going to use that just to light up the back edge just a little bit. So working in additive mode just means every time you lay down another brush stroke, it adds on top. So if I wanted to work with, let's say, blue and then take red with an additive mode, it adds up and then green, and it becomes white, right? So it's RGB, I can work with the primaries colors like this, and it just adds up, so. That's suitable. Then I can, I've got two kinds of brushes as well. I have one which is very big and soft, like that. The other one I have has the, has a sharper core to it so and those are like the two brushes that I use like I don't I don't have to have a huge bin of brushes there's just really no need yeah that, I, I like that shape because it really shows that plane that that planar turn Good. and then maybe just yeah yeah, that looks that looks pretty decent. Right, and and this sort of painting, you'll notice that I try to get away with a minimum number of brush strokes. I don't want to be, you know, painting lots and lots of little brushes, brush strokes. If you're using the airbrush, you want to use a minimum number of brush strokes. And then there's another problem here, and that is I need more depth separation. So even though I like that brush stroke they're too bright, right? By keeping this one dark and keeping the other one bright like that, it it's better. Like I find that I can kind of separate the two visually now. I'm just going to I'm I'm going to be a lot lighter on this one. Yeah. A lot lighter. And same thing with this one. Right? I'm trying to get that that depth separation and then I'll take my brush, put it in normal mode, just grab some of that background color. And just use it to um, cast a shadow. So if I cast that shadow, maybe soften it just a little bit. All right, so if I cast that shadow, it, it just pops it right out. Better. But I'm not done yet. And that would be... I, I, I like the rim light I have here. I'm going to also put my brush in additive mode. And, oh, of course, my layer, I'm using the wrong layer mask, so I can lock this one off. Yeah, there we are. Okay, so I'm going to... No, hang on. I just need to make sure that this is, uh, this is adding up the wrong way. I've got a band here, so I'm going to turn on my drawing. Or turn off drying now. Now it no longer bands up because I want to. That's better. Round that up. That's good. Not too bright, mind you. Maybe I'll take this brush here and again, this is my my hard my harder point in the middle. My hard point brush and then put it in additive mode, and then I'll just try not get a little bit of a, yeah, pop that out. It's good. Good, 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 good. I am satisfied with that. Set my background to my neutral gray like that. There you go. Very simple. Oh. One last thing, should 
go on to not that layer this layer here so you can see this is how the shading is it's like it's really simple right you don't you don't need to have a gazillion brush strokes and in fact i would say that when you're using airbrushes it looks worse when you have too many brush strokes so i'm in additive mode and just adding a specular highlight except i should really be on an additive layer to do this mm. and then i should use my uh, there, my pointy core brush, and then one more. Now, if I look at this this stripe here, there. So, I have been thinking. I want to run this by you guys. I have been thinking of running a Patreon or Patreon. Um, the only problem is with Patreon and Patreon is it's something that, like, I would like to be making regular videos, but my problem is that I tend to only make videos whenever I feel like I've made some kind of finding. I have some finding that is interesting enough to share with people, and so that's why my videos are always so erratic. It's because I don't find things out immediately like i don't i don't find things out on a regular basis right i work and i work until i try to do something new and then i'm like oh ran into a problem i work out the problem then i find something out which i share to you but problem with patreon is it seems to be more geared towards regular regular production of content and as you know i am always very very irregular when it comes to the production of content so i don't know what i'm going to do about that but I do think that if I was to do something like Patreon I, and I have regular subscribers, then I would allow, I would open up, you know, for questions, allow people to ask questions to help me come up with ideas for, for things to talk about. I'm just, I, it's like I'm, sorry, I, as I work at this, you know, I look at things and I always say, oh, I could, I could fix this up. I could add that. I could, I look at things from afar, good from afar, far from good. And here, yeah, it's like, I, I was just thinking, it's like, I went in there and I threw in that back highlight, but, you know, I think leaving it dim, leaving it dim makes it more, makes, makes it pop out more. I, I think I should, yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. Like, I could put that in there. If I look at that leg, it looks good when I do that, but if I take it out, then as a whole, the, the, the combination of the two looks better. Oh yeah, let me turn off my blue scaffolding. It's like that. That's how it looks. Like anyway, uh, tell me your thoughts. I'll um, in the comments. And well, that's that's it. All right, now go away and draw. <laughs> go away.